All right, guys. Uh, this is going to be our recap briefing uh, before we head back to Kujari. Uh, basically, for those of you who haven't started a campaign with us, uh, I'm going to go over the different events that went uh, that happened during the campaign so far, so that uh, you guys can follow up uh, in the action. Uh, basically, our mission on the Kujari campaign is to apprehend uh, the five gentlemen that are pictured there on the briefing board. At the top of the list, uh, we got Anatoly Gregov, age 55, nationality Russian. Uh, he's a supervisor for Blackthorn, uh, Russian PMC. He uh, served 15 years in the Russian military, including six years as an SSO operator. He worked as a consultant for various Russian security companies across Eastern Europe, North Africa, and the Middle East before joining Blackthorn. We believe he is currently in Kujari. Picture B would be Zaur Akabe, age 24. He's a Kujarian, uh, military intelligence. He served under General Maga Priyar to the prior to the coup uh, against uh, President Hakim Mumbasa. Uh, he currently commands the counterinsurgency arm of the Kujari military intelligence. He is nicknamed Butcher. Uh, he's got that nickname for the brutal treatment of uh, political dissidents. Uh, our friend uh, Akabe has been captured over the course of our operations. Uh, during the start of our campaign, so he's no longer on the board. Picture C, uh, this is Kakene Umaga, age 57. He's the president of Kujari. He's our main man. That's the one we're, uh, we want to capture. Uh, he was involved in the military operation against KLF rebels prior to the assassination of the most legitimate president of the country. User entered your channel. Uh, the previous president was elected on the platform of peace and reunification. Mombasa sidelined the general uh, in the process, and uh, we believe that the general took it personally and decided to uh, start a revolution against him, and that's why he assassinated him and took power over the, over the country. Next on the list, we've got uh, Jajil Adel, age 49, Kujarian. He's in charge of what the Kujarian refers to as Strategic Weapons Command. This is a new initiative that we don't know uh, about so far. Uh, we assume that it's part of uh, long-range artillery, but we're not sure. He served under General Umaga prior to the coup and uh, he's been put in charge of the artillery battalion uh, during the campaign against the KLF. Uh, he is now appointed as commander of the Strategic Weapons Command. So, as I mentioned, we are not sure of the nature of that uh, uh, force for now. Finally, at the bottom of the list, we've got Faisal Jalali, age 32, a uh, Kujarian Egyptian. He's a uh, Secretary of Resources Ministry. Uh, Jalali has an accounting PhD from the American University in Cairo. He was appointed to the role of Secretary of Resources by uh, President Akim Mombasa. After the coup, he was spared for his knowledge of the country's resources and economic. We're not sure if he's being coerced to cooperate with the regime or if he's doing it willingly. Uh, so for now, he's on our capture list. I'll uh, draw your attention to these boards over here. So we're currently dealing with two factions. Our op four is the Kujari Armed Forces, or KAF. Uh, their ground forces are uh, low-tech military, uh, comprised of uh, old Soviet-era tanks, uh, mostly old jeeps and technicals as well. Uh, they have some limited air capabilities, uh, mainly a few old UE transport helicopters, and uh, some of them converted gun, gun controls. 
and they have some limited plane uh, capabilities, mostly uh, a bomber. Uh, not really a significant threat for us. Against them, we've got the indigenous forces, the Kujari Liberation Front. Uh, these are a group of rebels that have been standing up against the uh, Kujari Armed Forces. Uh, we are currently standing with these guys, but uh, the situation is going on in the country. We need to make sure that we avoid friendly fire from these guys uh, to make sure that they stay on our side. Uh, in the event that uh, our statue uh, deteriorate with them, they might turn against us. So uh, we want to maintain good relations with these guys. Next up are our person of interest. Uh, basically, these are individuals that have been uh, providing us assistance with this operation so far. Uh, top left, we got Daniel Turner, IDEF supervisor. Uh, over the course of the first part of the campaign, uh, we received a few tasking uh, from him. Uh, mainly, we assisted him in rec recovering personnel and assets from IDEP that were captured by Kujari Armed Forces. Uh, we have stabilized re the uh, region where the IDEP is currently operating, so our tasking with the IDEP is mostly done. Uh, next up, we've got Sergeant Ari Johnson. Uh, he's the team leader for JTF2 Team Kodiak. Uh, during our first mission on Kujari, uh, Team Kodiak has provided us with crucial intel about uh, KF camp that we managed to recapture. Uh, the current whereabouts of this team is unknown. We believe they're uh, performing recon missions uh, in the area of operation. We will, we might have to recontact him at a later point during the campaign. Then we've got Sykes Scott. Uh, CIA SOG team leader. Uh, we've been working with him for a good portion of the uh, campaign during the second part. Uh, basically, the CIA has been involved in uh, an operation. Uh, the goal of the, the, of the CIA operation was to cripple the econo economics of the uh, uh, current regime by uh, cutting access to the natural resources of the country, uh, mainly targeting uh, mining operations and uh, oil fields. Uh, so far, our operations with the CIA have been mostly successful. We have managed to uh, chase away a group of Chinese investors who are interested in investing in uh, the mining operations in Kujari. Uh, all that remains now are a group of Russian mercenaries uh, the group referred to as Black Thorn, uh, that are still uh, guarding some of the uh, oil fields and uh, resources in the region. So we might have to deal with them uh, while we finish securing uh, the resource rich portion of the country. And finally, at last, we've got Manla Mombasa. Uh, he's the nephew of the former president and he's the leader of the Jari Liberation Front. Uh, his current whereabouts is unknown, uh, but we know that uh, he's uh, in command of the uh, Jari Liberation Front. Uh, hopefully, we might be able to get in contact with him at uh, some point so that we can coordinate our efforts a little bit better with the uh, uh, Kujari Liberation Front in order to take down the regime. You guys have any questions so far? Uh, no questions. I believe the, uh, the the third board there with the IDAP guys, we already secured those hostages, I think, didn't we? Yes. This, okay. uh, this board referred to our very first operation in the country. Uh, basically, the goal of the mission was to uh, secure uh, enemy IDAP camp, referred to as Objective Playbook. Uh, IDEP forces had uh, assembled a lot of uh, hardware and troops at that location. 
in what we believe was an attempt to attack the uh, UN base uh, near the objective uh, during our assault on that camp. We managed to destroy the enemy hardware. Unfortunately, one of the two hostages that was there was killed in the crossfire as we were trying to escape with them. We also recovered a laptop that was under control of the Russian PMCs there. Uh, that laptop has uh, provided us some vital intel into capturing our first HVT. And uh, we've got reason to believe that this uh, laptop is linked to uh, an operation network that is being used by the uh, Kujari Armed Forces and the mercenaries. Uh, basically, they're piggybacking on the uh, existing telecom infrastructure of the country in order to uh, keep to transmit their encrypted messages. Uh, from what we've discovered so far, we've been able to access their uh, secure network by inputting uh, digital codes inside that computer, and that allowed us to gain some intel uh, that allowed us to that capture our first HVT, and we've got reason to believe that we might be able to process additional intel from that laptop as we move on during the campaign. All right, any questions on the recap? Really good question. The pipes. Uh, you're, you're cutting out a little bit there. Uh, a good question for these guys to get answered is the type of enemy vehicles that they should expect to see. Yeah, I am noticing mostly light vehicles, but there does appear to be some armor in that uh, calf uh, intelligence photo. Uh, if, if, if I might, Warrior. <clears throat> sure. Uh, there, we've had a few run-ins uh, with their armored battalions, and uh, they usually roll, uh, I'd say, two, two to four uh, vehicles, uh, the times we have been attacked by them. Um, they're easy to take out as long as we have our AT and we're actually keeping our, head, our heads on a swivel. Uh, but if, if we allow them to get in too close, uh, they can be pretty lethal. Um, as far as their air assets go, uh, I know we've eliminated a couple of helicopters, uh, but they, whoever's piloting those Hueys uh, is, is pretty good about getting in and putting rockets on our forehead. So having having anti air as well as disposable uh, anti tank is something that we need to rely pretty pretty heavily on during the campaign. Um, am I going to have any kind of access towards uh, artillery air support, or that can be requested? Well, if Tarnished wants to play uh, Delta tonight, I can uh, be your soar pilot. Yeah, I, be I believe we have assets at our at our UN camp. Yes, we should have access to two pieces of artillery at the UN camp. Uh, we managed to capture an airfield during the first part of the campaign, so we have been able to field uh, drones from that location. Taking a bio real quick. As long as they are stationary and we find them before User they find your us, channel. we I'm can here. coordinate an attack with artillery and take them out. You know, if it comes to that, so I guess we go with our, just artillery unless you know having swords in the plans. Uh, yeah, our sword capabilities are rather limited, so we'll see what we can muster during the campaign. But uh, we'll okay. mostly have to rely on artillery uh, for our support. Any more questions? Uh, when you say that we've got artillery support, are we just talking a pair of mortars, or is there something bigger than that? We're talking about uh, uh, mechanized uh, artillery, uh, two hogs there. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, Big so, boy shit. Yeah, yeah. All right. Nice. Yeah, we have, uh, I believe there's <laughs> times two paladins at the UN camp. Yeah, that, that's what I was wondering, and that answers my question uh, very well. I don't play with that small shit. Yeah, you do. Shut up. Hey, you play with it every time you watch porn. 
All right. Did you, you know, I was just going to say a word. Did you want to mention sort of what happened towards the end? Of the, I think the last two missions we were on in that were yep. pretty eventful. Yep. So uh, I'll recap the first portion of the campaign real quick. Uh, our first mission, we went in, we captured a camp at the Lisbon Mansion, Objective Playbook. Uh, that was our first mission. During uh, our second mission, we were assigned by uh, the IDAP to uh, attempt to rescue two of their workers that went missing. Unfortunately, we uh, arrived too late. We found them executed inside a farm. Uh, they were hanged. Uh, at that farm, we recovered some intel that didn't have much significance at the time. So we continued our operation to secure the region. Uh, our second mission was an assault on the airfield. Our goal was to recover two supply trucks uh, that were carrying vital supplies for IDAP. We successfully recovered those trucks and brought them back to the IDAP camp. Following that mission, we had another encounter with KF forces in the village. Uh, we came across what uh, what we believe was uh, the site of a mass grave. Uh, we believe they were burying dead civilians at the village. Uh, we secured the area, but we encountered heavy resistance at that objective, and we attempted to retake the site and sent a lot of armor and helicopters at us. We prevailed during our engagement, and we managed to keep control of the area. UN inspectors have started their investigation there and have taken pictures of the site. Uh, following follow-up operations after that led us to more evidence of war crimes. Uh, we ended up finding enough intel to go after our first HVT, the Butcher. After we managed to capture the Butcher, uh, we transitioned to the second part of the campaign. We uh, operated mostly with the CIA. Uh, during the course of our mission with the CIA, we uh, impersonated uh, Russian personnel uh, from the uh, uh, Black Thorn PMC, and we went undercover and we attacked some Chinese position. The goal of the operation was to create a false flag operation and turn the Chinese and the Russians against one another. Uh, we have succeeded in that portion of the operation. Uh, Chinese forces that were in the area have deserted the region. They didn't want to get involved in an open conflict with the Russians. Uh, we also have reason to believe that this allowed us to raise the tension between Beijing and Moscow, which, uh, as you know, has allowed the uh, has caused the Chinese to cut off some of their support to the uh, ongoing war in Ukraine. So. We believe that uh, our efforts in Pujari have some repercussions there. Uh, during the course of our missions the, of the CIA operation, four, a group of six CIA operatives have been ambushed by Pujari armed forces. Uh, two of these uh, six operators were killed in action. Uh, four more were, were taken captive. Uh, during the first course of our uh, rescue attempt, we managed to recover two of those uh, six hostages, but uh, there were two still missing. Uh, Pujari Armed Forces released video of the hostages to the media, uh, which prompted us to uh, accelerate our rescue effort before they were executed live on camera. We managed to find those hostages and rescue them. So. That was the, uh, this is where we left off the campaign last time. We managed to successfully rescue the remaining CIA hostages. Are we on the training map? Where is everyone? I'll teleport you here, Russian. And I guess I should have turned too far back on then. Any other questions? Uh, yeah, after that uh, nice little summary, I'm wondering, do we have any uh, immediate strategic or tactical goals at, oh, as sure. of uh, immediately following that rescue? Is that something that we are still waiting for our next bit of intel for the briefing coming up? For the moment, uh, we don't have any strategic tasking. Our 
main goal right now is to uh, retake control of the region so that we can cut off uh, the Kujar, the uh, KF regime from any resources in the region so that we can cut off their funding and prevent them from buying additional arms so that uh, we can help the war effort in the going uh, in a proper direction. So we're going counterclockwise. Uh, so try to uh, envision the entire map of Kujari in four little squares. So we took the top right and we're finishing up taking the top left. So then we'll have the bottom left and bottom right after. So you'll be operating in the northeast portion. We'll uh, we'll be able to visualize that a little bit better once we have switch maps. We'll be able to show you the progress we've made so far. So I've been I've been on Kujari before in other units, so I know what he's talking about. It's, we're going to be dealing with a lot of very wide open spaces. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> Any other Any other four nine be bad for this. Uh... Oh, you'll have to see what your mission objective is when we get there. Exactly. Okay. Yes, yeah, so, uh, a lot of times we, we find ourselves... W w I would say that we're never uh, out of range of engagement. Um, 556 or 762 will be fine, and it's just going to depend on what our mission set is for that specific op. Any other questions uh, right now? Um, unless you want to save any additional questions from when we get to see the map and you get your mission briefing. Is water wet? Everybody good? We're good. All right. All right. Switching maps. Good. <laughs>